do video podcasts on Sundays. I think this might be only my second time, at most my third time, doing a video podcast on Sunday. Like, I've never done a video podcast on a Saturday, and I rarely, rarely, rarely do them on Sunday. I, I want to say again, this is my second time. Um, ladies, first of all, I know I got a lot of women who, who also listen to my video podcast. You can dismiss yourself. <laughs> Really, technically, none of my video podcasts are really directed at you all anyway. But this one in particular, I mean, I mean, I ain't, you know, I can't force you not to watch or not to listen, but this video podcast ain't for you. Matter of fact, normally when I do a free video podcast, I always tell you it's going to be a rant, a ramble, an admonishment, or a discussion about feedback from listeners, as well as addressing my haters and critics. Well, usually I let my Patreon subscribers, my most loyal fans, my most enthusiastic followers, and my, my clients off the hook. I rarely admonish them. I usually admonish anyone and everyone but my enthusiastic fans, my loyal followers, and my financial supporters and clients. But this video I'm going to be admonishing not all of you, not most of you, just some of you all. And this ain't just for something that happened recently. This is something that's been going on off and on for the last 10 years since I've been a dating coach. First of all, this is a big week for me. I'm going to have a speaking engagement in Orlando, Florida at what's known as the 21 Convention. This is the um, 10th year. I'm sorry, I got to turn off my phone. I don't want it disrupting me. Oh, this will shock some of you all. No vitamin water. Feed your water, baby. Just pure water. That's what's up. Health and fitness, baby. Um... Yeah, this is the 10th year of the 21 convention. I'm going to be the first African-American speaker they've ever had at that convention. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I fly out of town on Wednesday evening. So, uh, I mentioned before, I'm going to try to do some Patreon-exclusive videos from Orlando. I can't guarantee that, but I'm going to try to. Um... And, uh, yeah, it should be an interesting experience. Okay. Here's what provoked me to do this video podcast today. I was going to do one tomorrow or Tuesday. But, uh, as you know, I'm cool with a brother named O'Shea Duke Jackson. He's the editor-in-chief of a website I write for called The Negro Manosphere. In addition to being editor-in-chief for The Negro Manosphere, he has his own popular YouTube channel here on YouTube and he does he does some video podcasts where he speaks individually to his audience that are very popular he speaks about a broad range of subjects some specifically related to the black community otherwise other I thought I turned this damn phone on when I got a psychotic phone <laughs> I could have swore I just turned this motherfucker off man the fuck is that about Uh, Samsung Galaxy 8 Plus. I love the phone, but it got his things. Anyway, so O'Shea Duke Jackson, yeah, he speaks to a lot of issues, most of them related to the black community, some issues that are kind of universal, and then he does some group podcasts. Um, now, as you remember, most of my longtime followers will know this. The first person I really did podcasting with after I became a book author and a dating coach was a guy who goes by the name Steve the Dean Williams. We used to do a, a, a podcast between October of 2006 and March of 2007 called The Black Book Cafe. We did a, a podcast called The Black Book Cafe. It was just a, a pre-recorded 
audio podcast. Then, when he moved over to, um, he found out about Blog Talk Radio, and we start doing Blog Talk Radio beginning with April of 2007. And the appeal of Blog Talk Radio is that it combines elements of a live talk radio show with elements of a pre-recorded podcast. So while you're recording it, it's live for a listening audience to hear it. And then right after you're finished recording the episode, it immediately becomes a downloadable podcast. That was the appeal of Blog Talk Radio. I did a show... I was like his reoccurring guest co-host for about, I think about six weeks, starting with early April until about mid-May. And then we had, a, <laughs> we had, as I've talked about probably 300 zillion times, we had a falling out on air. We had a falling out on air. Specifically, Specifically because he um, he made a strong comment against black women. He basically said, I believe all black women are bitches. And he wanted me to co-sign with it. And I, I refused to. So he was like, well then, get off my show. And I did. I hung up. Um, so we've had an interesting internet friendship is what I call it because I've never met him in person. So if I've never met someone in person, I refer to that as an internet friendship. We've had an on again, off again internet friendship. We, we've, we've had probably at minimum, I think, four falling outs, if not five. Um, about different things. One, one falling out lasted quite a while. It lasted just under three years between fall of 2010 and like summer of uh, 2013. Yeah, we went, yeah, we went at least two and a half, almost three years without speaking. Uh, anyway, that's another story for another day. Steve is one of O'Shea's regularly occurring co-hosts on what he calls his Brother Peel podcast. Now, I was going to put the link in the comment section. You can always leave me feedback in the comment section. And my relevant and important links are in the description section below. But um, in just the last couple of hours, O'Shea removed the podcast. And so it's no longer up on his channel. So I can't direct you to the podcast. But here's the issue that admittedly got under my skin. Not only on Steve's part. Something Steve did, he did about two or three things that got on my nerves and got under my skin, but also at least one of my, my followers. I don't know how loyal of a follower this guy is of me, but I, I told guys this way back in my blog talk radio days, and I'm going to tell you again. Don't call into people's shows, talk radio, podcast, whatever, and ask another dating coach what is the difference between your approach and your principles and philosophies in mode one? Don't ask people that question. Please do not ask people that question. I hate when someone who calls himself a fan of mine, a follower of mine, a current or former client of mine, will ask somebody, another dating coach or relationship expert, what's the differences between what you, the advice you give and the advice Alan Roger Curry gives. Don't ask that question. You get it? Got it? Good. Don't ask that question. If you want to know about another dating coach or relationship experts, what they have to offer in terms of their advice, just ask them about their advice. That's what you do. If you're talking to Joe Schmo, the dating advice the dating coach from Canada, the dating coach from Brazil, the dating coach from Russia, the dating coach from Japan, whoever. If you want to find out what they have to offer in the way of advice, just ask them about their advice. Ask them about their advice. The only time, here's the only time I've said this before, that you should ask someone else about my stuff. 
is if they've offered a, a specific quote or assessment about the advice I give. So say, for example, they wrote a blog article saying, in my opinion, I feel like Alan Roger Curry's more one advice is this, 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 this. Now, if somebody has offered a quotable assessment of my advice, number one, I would ask that you bring it to my attention, which a lot of my followers have when those instances have happened. Bring it to my attention. And then if you're going to ask them a question, about me, just use that, whatever that quotable assessment they offer. But other than that, don't ask people about my advice. Why, among other reasons? Because ain't nobody mo one, okay? I'm mo one, all right? Steve Dean Williams, with all due respect to him, he ain't mo one, ain't never been mo one has never understood thoroughly mode one. Okay? You get that? You get that? Steve Dean Williams is not mode one. Matter of fact, if, if honestly, if I was assessing the advice he gives based on my four modes of behavior, a lot of his advice falls more into mode two. Like in this podcast that O'Shea removed, he emphasized part of his advice is telling men when they first approach a woman, to be courteous. That's his words. He said, I, I tell men to be courteous. See, in my book, that's mode two. Mode two is all about being polite, well-mannered, courteous. That's what mode two is. So Steve, under my, within the, the parameters of my book, Steve's advice will fall into mode two. So that right there should tell you that his advice is not the same as mine. Steve is not more one. Don't cause somebody called into O'Shea show. How to it got started? Somebody called in and asked Steve, "What's the difference between your advice on approaching women for the first time versus Alan Roger Curry's more one advice related to approaching women for the first time?" See right there, that was a mistake. I'm not gonna call out. I know who the individual guy who did this. I know his username. I don't know his real name. He hails from. Well, I ain't going to say where it hails from, but country in Europe. Um, but yeah, man, I know, you know, you probably didn't know. You might you might not have heard my previous admonishments on this subject, so I'll give you a pass this time. But for future reference, for you and all other men listening, don't ask people about my advice or that type of question like, whether it's Steve or any other dating culture relationship ex, don't ask people what's the difference between what you do and what you advise versus Alan Roger Curry. Because they, 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 number one, they, because they don't under, thoroughly understand my one, they're not going to give you, like Steve, again, with all due respect to him, man, he fucked up my one when he was trying to explain. He did what a lot of PUAs have done over the last 10 years, and it pisses me the fuck off. Pisses me the fuck off. Steve made the mistake of doing exactly like he did two things related to why me and Yad in London, if you remember that infamous philosophical debate I had with that guy named Yad in London. A lot of people always try to reduce Mo One to, oh, Mo One is just about going up to a woman and saying, hey, my name is Frank and I want to fuck you. That ain't what Mo One is about. And I get sick and tired of people saying that shit. Not only do regular motherfuckers say that shit like they used to do on PUA hate, but other dating coaches and PUAs tend to say that shit when people ask them about Mo One. They'll say, oh yeah, Mo One, that's Alan Roger Curry saying, yeah, that's all about going up to a woman and saying, hey, my name's Frank and I want to fuck the shit out of you. No, it's not. And by you saying that, that lets me know you don't fucking know what Mo One is about, including Steve to Dean Williams. He don't fucking know what Mo One is about because he ain't Mo One. It ain't just about going up to a woman and, and just out of the, in the first five seconds saying, hey, my name is Dion and I want to fuck you. If, if motherfuckers have read my books, which a lot of you have, and or listened to my audio books, you know that. You know that. It ain't about just walking up to a woman and saying, I want to fuck you. So that's, that's the mistake that Steve made in his response to this caller's question is he reduced Mo One 
to being all about just going up to a woman and immediately saying, I want to fuck you. And that's not what my one is about. Now, have I done that in my own way? Yes, I have. But I'm an advanced motherfucker, man. And I've talked about that before. I'm an advanced motherfucker. See, the thing you guys miss when I tell the stories of when I've approached women like that, what you don't take into account with me is that I know how to read women. Let me say that again. I know how to read women. 90 to 99% of y'all motherfuckers out there, y'all don't know how to read women like I do. I've talked about this multiple times before. Matter of fact, I've told this story a few times. There was a woman who called into my show on Blog Talk Radio. And she called in to criticize me. And then within a couple of minutes, two to three minutes into the conversation, I had her giggling and I had her talking nasty a little bit. And she invited me to call her after the show. So I think either the next day or two days later after the show, we ended up talking privately. And I, 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 I know for a fact, I told this story at least on one previous video podcast, and I told it at least a couple times on Blocked Radio, but I'm telling it again. Um, but she said something interesting, which was actually true. She said, Alan, I don't even know you. I've never met you in real life. But she said, you're misleading a lot of your listeners and followers and readers of your books. I said, how so? She said, you make a lot of your listeners, readers, and followers seem like you just walk up to women and just start saying X-rated shit and they just magically open their legs for you. But I know from talking to you, that's not the case. And I said, well, young lady, with all due respect, I've never tried to suggest that it's like step one, two, three like that. I've never, if you read my books, you would know that. I've, I've never suggested that. I've had my instances where I've said triple X-rated shit right off the bat, but generally that, that's not what Mo One is about. She said, and here's where she said some interest. She said, she said, oh, you don't even have to tell me. She said, I can tell by how you interacted with me on your blog talk radio show. Before you said anything provocative or X-rated to me, she said, I'm really into what's known as new age something. Like she's into whole new age meditation that deals with chakras and physical energy, verbal energy, that type of thing. I know a few people are into that whole new age mystical type. Like a woman I know named Alexis K. Tyler. She's into that type of stuff. She's real big into chakras and energy fields. This woman I interviewed on Blog Talk Radio named Sasha Cobra. She's really into that. There's a few people into that. And anyway, she so she first explained that that's what she's into. And then she went on to say, she said, Alan, she said, again, without knowing you in person, here's what you do, because I sense what you did to me when I called into your show. What you first did is you read my verbal energy. You didn't just immediately say something to me that was provocative or explicit. You read my verbal energy to get a read on the type of woman I am. Then once you felt like you had a read on the type of woman I was, then you proceeded to say something provocative and explicit. And I was like, hmm. Because that is what I do. If you get my paperback uh, up front and straightforward, and I think in my audiobook version, who said again, I talk about this. I talk about reading women. That's actually the main thing I get paid for when I do one-on-one face-to-face -on -one -face coaching sessions with clients. As opposed to, say, email consultations or Skype and telephone consultations. One of my big things when people hire me for my eight-hour face-to-face or my three-day face-to-face sessions is I teach men not only how to verbally communicate with women, but how to read their body language and read what I would call their vibe, which is the same thing as that woman talking about energy. I refer to that as a woman's vibe, her vibe. That's what I teach men to do in my face-to-face -face coaching sessions. You got to know how to read women's vibe, man. So for the women that I do e say something really X-rated or triple X-rated, say within the first 15 to 30 seconds of my first conversation with them, 
I only do that with women after I've taken a few seconds or a minute or two to read their vibe. I read their vibe. You got to be at an advanced level to know how to do that. Not, not, no just random motherfucker knows how to do that. I know how to do that. That's why I can get away with saying shit right off the bat with certain women. But that aside, that aside, Mo One is not about just walking up to a woman. Like even David X, fellow Dayton coach, he even admitted to me when we were in London together. He said before he heard the details of my speaking presentation in London, he said, Alan, I'm going to be honest. I, I was one of those guys because I was admonishing some guys in the audience about thinking that Mo One was just about going up to a woman and saying, I want to fuck you. And David X admitted, he said, he said, before I really talked to you and heard your speaking presentation, that's what I thought Mo One was about. He said, I thought Mo One was just about going up to a woman and immediately saying, I want to fuck you right off the bat. He said, but after listening to you do your, your speaking presentation, I understand differently now. I understand there's more to it than that. So yeah, that's why I have to be critical of Steve, man. He he when he was responding to this caller's question about the difference between his approach and my approach, he reduced it to uh Alan's Mo One is about going up to women and saying, I want to fuck you. Second thing, Steve, I would be critical of Steve's response to this caller, is he made some comments that basically suggested or implied that the only women you're going to have success with, with Mo One, are slutty type women. Highly promiscuous, slutty type women. That's bullshit. And see, this is why me and going back to Yad, I got to call him out. That's why me and Yad got into it in London. That's exactly over half the reason why me and Yad got into it in London. Because Yad essentially said the same thing on stage in London. That's what he said. He basically said that if you mow one, the only women you're going to end up pulling is women who are just slags, which is the London equivalent to a slut. He said that's the only woman you're going to end up pulling is slags. You ain't going to pull no, what he said basically, he said you ain't going to pull no like classy good girl type women with mow one. You're just going to pull slag types. And Steve said a variation of that, that comment to this caller. He, he told this caller that if you mow one, if you use my approach, you're going to end up overlooking the more high quality, prudish, monogamy oriented, good girl type women of society. Oh, so my brother got a high quality woman as his wife. Huh? Huh? My brother got a high quality woman as his My brother credits mow one to him finding his wife. I know for a fact, my, my, my sister-in-law ain't no slutty bitch. She comes from a top-notch family. She's a top-notch woman. And if somebody was to suggest that my brother's wife was, was slutty to his face, they'd get a, a hard fist to their fucking nose, and I would be right behind them punching them in the nose. I know a lot of male friends and acquaintances of mine who hooked up with quality women because of Mo One. I, a lot of my clients have. I, I have clients who have married women because of Mo One. I had one of my one-on-one face-to-face -on -face clients about six to nine months after we did our one-on-one face-to-face -on -face consultation. He ended up getting engaged to a woman he met, and they ended up getting married. So for anybody, not just Steve, but any, because he ain't the only one. PUAs, a lot of PUAs and other dating coaches have tried to suggest this. That Mo One only helps you hook up with slut. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. So that's a major misconception. So that's two misconceptions right there that you need to understand. And again, I ain't just going to pick on Steve because these two misconceptions have been perpetuated probably for the last 10 years that I've been a dating coach. Is misconception number one is that Mo One is just solely and specifically about going up to a woman and immediately saying, I want to fuck you. My name's Ralph and I want to fuck you. No, it's not. And if you read both versions of Mo One, and particularly my updated version, which as of this morning was number 10 in communication skills, it was actually number one in uh, late April, early May of this year.
It was actually the number one ebook in the category of uh, communication skills on Amazon. It's my updated version called Mo One Whisper in a Woman's Ear What's Really on Your Mind. I'll put the link below. Yeah, it's actually, most of the last few months, it's been selling better than my original version of Mo One. It's my updated version. Guys been giving me a lot of feedback. Matter of fact, for guys who've read both versions, just about all of them said they like my updated version better than my original version. Now, if you have my audio book, you can still buy it. I would love for you to still buy it, but there would be no need because it's so close to my audio book version of Mo One that there's not that much difference. It might be this little bit. It's not that much difference between my updated Mo One and my Mo One audio book. But if you only have my original ebook or original paperback, version of Mo One, like either the 1999 ebook version or the 2006 paperback version, and you don't have the audiobook, then yeah, you need to either buy my updated version of Mo One and or you need to buy my audiobook version because it is more detailed, it's more specific. But I make it clear in there. Two things I make clear in my books and audiobooks. Mo One is never about immediately, like right off the bat, talking to a woman in a triple X-rated manner. It's never about that, except for rare instances, rare instances. But for the, and generally speaking, my one is never about, damn, I thought I turned my phone off. What the fuck? It keeps coming back on. What kind of phone keeps coming back on after you've turned it off? Um... Yeah, it's not about that, man. Especially if you knew the mall one. Who said again? Speaking of my book, who said again is the book you need to pay attention to specific. See, here's a big, as you know, I got four archetypes of women. Four archetypes of women. God damn, this is getting on my nerves, man. Hold on. you off this motherfucker will not let me turn it off this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen <laughs> my phone will literally not let me turn it off that's crazy um who said again Oh, I was talking about four archetypes. Here are the four archetypes, man. Reciprocators, rejectors, wholesome pretenders slash erotic hypocrites, and manipulative time wasters. That's my four archetypes of women. Reciprocators, rejectors, wholesome pretenders slash erotic hypocrites, and manipulative time wasters. So, that's your first objective. I'm not going to go into detail. Long detail for each one. But in a nutshell, man, if you're talking to a rejecter, why would you want to be talking to her about sex? Why? If you haven't identified which of those four archetypes a woman's falling, why, why are you even thinking about talking to a woman about sex? See, the main women I start talking dirty to and talking about sex is the wholesome, pretender, erotic, hypocrite types. And to a lesser extent, the reciprocator types. But rejectors, you're wasting your time talking about sex or talk, trying to talk dirty to a rejector. The fuck? Second most obvious reason why most women you shouldn't talk to them right off the bat, how do you know if a woman is single and available to share your company? How you know a woman is not engaged to be married? How you know a woman ain't in a 10-year relationship with a long-term boyfriend? How you know if you're in a public spot that a woman's boyfriend, fiance, or husband ain't five feet away from you guys? 
Like I did that. I told you. There's at least one time in my life I did. I made that mistake. I didn't pay attention to if a woman had a ring on her finger. I approached this woman in the grocery store and said something triple X rated to her. And she said, I think you need to ask my husband if you can fuck me. <laughs> now, it didn't cause no drama. He ended up being cool about it. He was actually amused by my approach. But that was early on when I was more one as a youngster. But it taught me a lesson, man, that if nothing else, First thing you got to do before you approach a woman is scout her ring finger and see if she got a ring on her finger. Because it turns out that woman that I said that X-rated comment to, she had a ring on her finger. Big ass ring, matter of fact. And see, that was one woman that I did myself made the mistake of just right off the bat. I went up to her, I said, no, I didn't immediately just say I want to fuck you. What I went up to her, I said, so when would, I, when would you like to share my company? And she said, share your company for what purpose? I said, among other things, so I can fuck the shit out of you. And she said, hmm. Now that's, now that's an original approach. She said, I would have to ask permission from my husband. And all of a sudden, her husband came out of nowhere. I, I, I was like, where did this motherfucker come from? And he, she was like, yeah, this, 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 this young man wants to fuck me. <laughs> Honey, what do you think about that? He just told me he wants to fuck me. And he laughed about it though. He didn't, he didn't, you know, he didn't get drama with me. He was just like, shit, as fine as my wife is, if I didn't know she was married, I would be trying to fuck her too. He said, so it lets me know you got good taste in women. And we ended up laughing about it actually. But that's, again, that story taught me, man, that at bare, bare minimum, you got to do either look at a woman's ring finger and or you got to ask at least one or two questions to find out if she's single and, av and even available to share your company. For example, she might be single, but she might be just visiting from out of town for a couple of hours. She might be going to catch a flight in like a half hour. So how are you going to fuck a woman and she's going to catch a flight back to her country in a half hour? So anyway... Yeah, man, I didn't approve. I didn't approve. I, I didn't approve on either end. I didn't approve of the question itself that this follow of mine asked Steve to Dean Williams. I didn't approve of that question. I don't like those questions. If you want to know what Steve to Dean Williams does, just ask him what he does. Just ask him what advice he gives. But don't ask him for us any type of direct comparison to what I do. Okay? One big difference between me and Steve, among other things, man, Steve is married, man. Steve has been married since 1999. That's not to say he can't, it's impossible for him to give single men advice, but he's married, man. <laughs> he's got a wife and five kids, man. Steve is giving you advice based on what he did prior to getting married. He ain't out there in the game right now, like me. I'm still out there in the game. I ain't never been married. I ain't got no wife. I ain't got no kids. So that's one big difference right off the bat between me and Steve D. Williams. Steve D. Williams is an 18-year married man. Now, how faithfully monogamous he is to his wife, I have no idea and don't care. But he's a married man. Just like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Clyde Drexler, Patrick Ewing. All of those are great NBA players, but guess what? They're former NBA players. They're not still playing today. They former NBA players. Clyde Drexler could probably give some people good advice, but he, he would give advice from the perspective of a retired NBA player, not a current active NBA player like LeBron James or Steph Curry or Chris Paul. And that's no dig on Steve, but I'm just keeping it real, man. Steve is married, man. He's been married since 1999. He, he ain't out there like that anymore. He ain't out there like that. Don't compare his advice to me. Again, just on his own words, I can tell you his, his advice is different from mine. Again, he emphasized the word courteous. I never emphasize that word. That's that's what I talk about when I talk about being mo two with women. That's what mo two is, is that where the emphasis is on being courteous and polite and well mannered and 
easy to get along with that type of thing. That's mode two, man. In my book, that's mode two. That ain't mode one. I'm going to take one more dig at Steve. Well, I shouldn't because O'Shea pulled the podcast down. So maybe I shouldn't on this last thing. I just say, without getting into detail, he took a metaphor that I use in my Ooh Say It Again book. And I ain't like that. I ain't going to say what it is since O'Shea took the podcast down now. So I don't want to make bigger drama. But there was a metaphor he used in that podcast that that's been my metaphor for, for the longest. That's in my Ooh Say It Again book. And so for somebody to use that same metaphor out of my book, is borderline copyright infringement. I'll just give you a clue. It has something to do with the an angel on the right shoulder and the devil on the left shoulder. I ain't going to say more than that. That's my motherfucking metaphor. That is my metaphor. But specifically when it comes to my archetype of the wholesome pretender and erotic hypocrite. That's my motherfucking metaphor. So again, you guys, don't ask other people, man. Don't ask other people, man, about their comparison. Unless, again, the only exception, they don't mind you asking somebody else, say another dating coach or PUA, relationship expert, about something to do with me, is if they've offered a quotable assessment of the advice that I give. If they've offered their assessment, good, bad, or indifferent, about what they think more one is about then I don't mind you asking them hey dating coach you know Willie Johnson I saw on your blog article where you said Alan Roger Curry's Mo one approach will only allow you to hook up with nightclub skanks why do you say that see in that case I don't mind you asking them about my approach because they offered a quotable assessment but if somebody has never offered a quotable assessment don't ask them about my shit, man. Just ask them about their shit. Don't ask them about my shit. Because again, man, ain't nobody approach women exactly like I do. Nobody has the exact mindset that I do. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. How many times have you heard me say this on this video podcast? And if somebody does have the exact same mindset as I do, they, they, they being a copycat. That's what they being. They being a blatant fucking copycat of me. Like David X, he's probably no one dating coach. I would say is probably arguably the most similar to me. And even his mindset is a little bit different than mine. But we're both believe in being verbally direct. But his verbal directness is a little bit different than mine. So even David X is not just like me. And he's probably the closest dating coach of all the dating coaches I'm familiar with. I would say David X is probably the closest to me. And his shit is, is different from mine. Ain't nobody exactly like me. Nobody. No dating coach. No verbal seduction coach. No relationship expert. Ain't nobody shit just like me. And again, if it is just like me, that means they blatantly copying my shit. Ask them if they got their dick sucked in a grocery store 10 minutes after they met a woman. Or in a, in a major airport 15 minutes after they met a woman. I guarantee you 99.9% .9 chance the answer is going to be no. Here's how you can tell where my, my approaches with women are different than just about every other dating coach out there. Most of the dating coaches I listen to, even the ones who've had some same-day sex, same-day seduction success, they never talk about overcoming harsh criticisms or insults to get a woman in bed. Their, their same-day seductions usually center around a woman that just basically reciprocated immediately, what I'll call a reciprocator. I've never heard anybody, another dating coach, talk about, yeah, I met this woman, and I said X, Y, Z, and then she started going off on me and calling me names and this and that, but then 20, 30 minutes later, I was fucking her and she was sucking my dick. Name another dating coach who talks about that shit like I do. Name somebody. Name somebody. Name somebody. Put it in my comment section. Name somebody. Ain't nobody on Alan Roger Curry's level, man, when it comes to verbal seduction. I said that before, man. I'm the king of verbal seduction, man. Ain't nobody on my level when it comes to verbal seduction. Nobody. Did I stutter when I said that? No. Nobody. 
Does that include Steve D. Williams? That, that, you goddamn right it does. Ain't nobody on my level, man, when it comes to verbal seduction. Particularly in the very first conversation with a woman. Ain't nobody on my level. I say that as O'Shea Duke Jackson loves this word I use. I say that emphatically. Ain't no dating coach or relationships expert on my level when it comes to verbal seduction skills and erotic dirty talk skills. Nobody. Get it? Got it? Good. If you bought a ticket to the 21 convention, I look forward to meeting you in Orlando, Florida later on this week. Um, check out my, see I went under an hour. So you guys always say when I predict I'm going to go under an hour, I never do. This instance, it's not going to be an hour. I'm going to put a link to my updated version of Mo 1 below. But again, man, oh, let me add on one more thing on that. Because a lot of you guys do the reverse of that too. I just forgot to add this admonishment. Don't write me emails or Facebook inbox messages asking me for my comparison to other dating coaches, philosophies, principles, approaches, etc. Man, I hate when you guys do that. I haven't talked about it too much on my video podcast, but I used to talk about that a lot on, on blog when I had my blog talk radio show, man. I haven't had too much of that in the last, honestly, in the last six months or so, so I give you guys credit. You guys have toned that down. But there was a time, man, where a lot of you guys would write me notes like, hey, Alan, like, how would you compare your approach to so-and-so's approach, man? And how would you compare the contents of your book to so-and-so's book? Man, fuck all them other people, man. They are who they are, man. I don't, I don't even actively look to... The only time I research other people's stuff, their books, their philosophies, their principles, is if somebody points out to me that they've said something disparaging about my shit. That's the only time when I pay attention to something somebody, another dating coach says, another relationship expert, is if they say something that I feel is critical, negative, or disparaging about my shit. If that person ain't never said nothing negative, critical, or disparaging about my shit, I don't give a fuck about their shit. They are who they are. But, yeah, if, if they say something, like, I'll give you one example by name. There's a guy, I mentioned this a couple times before, there's a guy who got a book out called Models. His name is Mark Manson. And he had a real popular message board. He probably still does. I haven't been there in a while. But I remember one time, he wrote a comment on his message board because somebody said that they felt like Mo One and his book Models were very similar to each other. And matter of fact, I have had a lot of my followers say that too. They said, Mark Manson's book is very similar to your Mo One book. The only difference, they say his book doesn't specifically relate to hooking up with women for sex. It's about being upfront, specific, and straightforwardly honest with people, period. Just in life, period as opposed to specifically as it relates to dating relationships or sex. And anyway, that's that's the comment he ended up making on his message board. He made a comment, somebody asked him about the comparison between Mo One and Models. He said, well, Alan's book, from what I know about it, his book is all about the, the pursuit of sex. My book is not about the pursuit of sex. And I fired back at him because that's kind of half true and half not true. I would say, yeah, most of my book is related to connecting with women. But I've had a lot of people, including my older brother, who have taken the principle of Mo One and applied it to just everyday life too. Matter of fact, that's why I wrote my follow-up book called Upfront and Straightforward. If you're familiar with my second paperback called Upfront and Straightforward, let the manipulative game players know what you're really thinking. That book covers both Dating and be, it covers the idea of being straightforwardly honest as it relates to dating relationships and women as well as just in general. In general, it basically teaches you how to identify manipulative people, period. Not just manipulative women, but manipulative people, period. So I, I at least, if not fully disagreed with Mark Manson's assessment, I at least partially disagree with his assessment that my book is not just about solely and specifically about the pursuit of sex. 
I would say more important than the pursuit of sex, more one is about helping people quickly and effectively identify people who are a combination of disingenuous and highly manipulative. Disingenuous and misleading and manipulative types. I, I would say that's at least one thing that's more important than the pursuit of sex with Mo One. It helps you identify people who are disin, who have a very disingenuous nature about them and a very misleading and manipulative nature about them. So anyway, don't ask me about my comparisons with other people. Don't ask other people about their comparisons with me. Just find out what their approach is. If you like their approach and their advice better than mine, go with them. I ain't going to call you no names or insult you. If you think Mystery Method offers you better advice about dealing with women than me, follow Mystery Method. If you feel like David Wygant offers you better advice or Neil Strauss offers you better advice or any other dating coach offers you or relationship expert offers you advice that resonates with you more than my advice resonates with you, then by all means, follow that other person. I've never tried to prevent people from following other people. But here's what I don't want people to do, and David X feels the same way. David X said this in London, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. When he was speaking in London at the first direct dating summit, he said, the purpose of this direct dating summit is for you to listen to what I have to offer in the way of advice, what Alan Roger Curry has to offer in the way of advice, and every other speaker here has to offer in the way of advice. He said the best thing for you to do is listen to what everybody has to offer and then make the decision of whose advice fits best with your personality and which resonates with you the most and go with that person's advice. But don't try to follow like three different dating coaches at the same time. Because it's inevitable that there's going to be certain aspects of each person's dating advice that's going to clash. And perfect example, Stephen Dean Williams. He has some things I've heard him say is along the lines of advice for men that's similar to mine. But I've heard him say other things that's a total contradiction of my shit. It's a clash. And that's why... If you're a guy that tries to follow me and Steve Dean Williams or me and Ron Wills or me and Hashim Lucario or me and name, insert dating coach's name here, I guarantee you there's going to be, you, there's going to always be one, two or three things that's going to clash where you're going to say, well, damn, Alan said this, but this other guy said that. And that's why David X said, man, you shouldn't try to follow multiple dating coaches at the same time. Because ain't, ain't no, I'm telling you, man, ain't nobody exactly like my shit, man. There's a method to my madness, man. Ain't nobody exactly, don't nobody think exactly like I do. Nobody. There's no other dating coach, dating advisor, relationship manager who thinks exactly like I do. There might be some that are loosely similar to me, but there's nobody who thinks exactly like I do. Nobody. Again, of all the people I'm familiar with, the person I would say who's the closest to me in, in, in thought and philosophy would be David X. And even David X is, is, is much different than me in many ways. So, ain't nobody exactly like me. Mo One, baby. I'm the Mo One originator. Ain't nobody Mo One but me. And the motherfuckers I teach and coach believe that shit. Hashtag. No one like Alan Roger Curry. That's the hashtag. No one like Alan Roger Curry. No. Let me put there is in front of that. There is no one just like Alan Roger Curry. I know that's long, but for those of you who like to do my hashtag, the purpose of my hashtag is usually to show that you listen to the whole video and not just the first half of it or the first two-thirds of it, but you listen all the way to the end. 
the hashtag is there is no one just like Alan Roger Curry. All right, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And I might do another one on Tuesday before I leave for Orlando, but I'm not going to guarantee it. So you just have to wait and see. All right, fellas, talk to you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Say it again. Yes, sir. Who's the king? Alan, you're the king. Say it again. Alan, you're the king. <laughs> you're dominating me. Say it again. Alan, you're dominating me right now. Mode one. Mode one. <laughs> Daddy, can I go, please? You're the king. Say it again. Oh, my God. Oh, you're the fucking king. Yes. 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 Oh. 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 You're the king, Alan. A.K.A. the king of verbal seduction. You know, it's the tone of your voice. How seductive your intonations are. The vibrations that you could just reach out over the phone lines and stroke a woman's breast just by the sound of your voice. How you could make her pussy so wet just by the sound of your voice. That's actually very hot. So you said my show was what? I said your show is powerful. Oh, say it again. Your show is powerful. I bet the king would fuck me really good. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Curry. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Curry. The king. The king. The king.